yeah, guarantees it runs. Oh yeah, we discovered that last video. Motor is complete junk. Yeah, the motor was a bit of a setback. Not really surprising, although I was surprised it was actually that bad. I'm um, talking to a couple of guys down in Houston that have a junkyard. They said that uh, the theory is it got flooded with seawater at some point because it's just so rusty. Um, it appears that the donor car got flooded, not this car. This car doesn't have any like water or mud inside the, the speedometer and places like this where you would expect if it had gotten flooded. So it looked like the donor car was flooded and the people who were installing the motor did not know this and must have discovered at some point and just gave up. Um, just clearly that thing is way beyond garbage. Uh, still in the process of looking to find a new motor. Um, I actually did come across a, uh, an RV that was offered up um, with a 454 400 trans in it with only 50,000 original miles. The problem is it's in an RV and I have no way to, you know, to move it. So probably gonna have to pass on that one. So I'm gonna try to not think about the motor at the moment and we're gonna work on getting the rear suspension in so I can make the car roller again. Uh, Cause currently it's landlocked, which is kind of a problem. So today's uh, project will be uh, working on that and hopefully get to a point where it's at least tacked in place. Nothing like coming home and finding uh, presents on the porch. Or in my driveway, anyway. And what we got here is the rear suspension kit from the Jimenez Brothers Customs in Riverside, California. It is a complete kit, comes with everything you could possibly need to uh, do the two link and air ride on the back of your car, let alone my big ol' ass hearse. Uh, it's pretty good quality. This is using a two link design. Comes with all the Johnny joints, Panhard bar, the top bar with the shock mounts, the bag mounts, rear cradle there, frame notch, and airbags. This is a pretty complete setup. And I gotta say, this is a, a pretty high quality. You can get everything's nice and TIG welded. You know, all the parts look nice, good. Uh, pretty impressed. We've got the heavy duty Johnny joints, so this should take a fair amount of horsepower that I probably won't have. Comes with sleeved airbags. Not 100% sure if these will be large enough. May have to change the larger ones, but uh, I'm pretty sure they will at least work for now. The nice uh, frame notch here. So we're going to put that in there. Comes with the hoop, comes with the shocks, all the hardware, all grade eight. None of that uh, cheesy uh, grade five stuff. This is uh, all very good, high quality. Very impressed. The axle mounts are actually adjustable so you can change your pinion as needed hopefully just once but all in all this should be a good ride in uh, rear kit here and this is where it will be going got plenty of room haven't 100 percent decided whether i'm going to put the frame notch in i'm probably going to notch it maybe just a smidge but hopefully it shouldn't be too painful First thing we gotta do is get all this cleaned up and get the rear end ready to weld. Well, that there is a good sign. Yeah, I know it spilled oil, but at least it's oil, not water. That uh, is good news. Definitely want to save that.
Gotta give me some place to put the rear end while I clean it. Smarter, not harder. <laughs> That will work. Need to get the old axle pads off first. Clean this all out, and we're just about ready to weld it up. Jack Nicholson said, it's as good as it gets. Clean enough to weld, so that's what we're looking for. Got all the brackets off and all the other miscellaneous nonsense. Now to start setting it up. So one of the things you're gonna to wanna to do is these are the axle tabs that go on the bottom. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you trim them so they fit the axle actually properly. I had to grind a little bit out of there and just square them up, so now they're perfect and ready to go. All the packages are labeled, so it makes it pretty nice. So I got these all bolted up, and these are actually adjustable, so you can change the pinion just a bit. Comes with a nice spacers and stuff. Definitely a, definitely a quality item. Johnny joints. <sighs> Gotta put the jam nuts on there. We'll leave them somewhere in the middle there. You want to take the time to get them lined up. So put the bolt in there and basically just line the, uh, the bolts up so that way everything's the same length and then we can adjust from that point on. Now just thread these in. Kind of get into the jam nut. You want to have the uh, zerk fitting facing down that way you can actually do maintenance on this thing like that ever happens. And there we go. Well, mostly assembled anyway. So you got over here, you've got a couple different holes you can use. The way you can adjust you know, your pinion as needed and so forth. And this is actually nice because these are heavy duty so if you need to mount something on top of these for some reason maybe move your bag or add an additional one you got plenty of plenty of options here. And this is pretty much how it's going to assemble. You got the airbags behind the axle, upper shock mount, you got the lower bar here, which is for the bottom shock mount, and it does not come welded in place because that's something you have to do after you set up the angle this is going to sit in the actual vehicle. Comes with a real nice frame notch, nice and clean. Now you're going to be tempted to tack some stuff in place on your workbench. Don't do that. You need to get it in the car, get everything set up, and then tack it, and then probably pull it all out, finish welding, and then put it all back in and do final welding. This is a two-link design. Suspension comes in various different forms, two-link, three-link, four-link, parallel, cantilever, and on and on. It's all specifically driven to whatever you need it for. Now, one of the things with a hearse is it's so long that I have to have air ride. There's no getting around that. Simply because I like to have the car sit low and I gotta be able to have some adjustability to get over speed bumps and alligators, corpses, these types of things you come across. So I went with this uh, two link design because it'll give me one, uh, the good stability, it'll give me a good amount of travel and lift, as well as it'll take some actual horsepower. Uh so 
So I took and set it at a right height, which is, I'm going to guess, about five inches. So I put a two by four and a four by four together. So that sets it up as, a, you know, about a five inch ride height, which is a good guess of where it's going to realistically be. Um, I don't really have an exhaust or anything else in the way currently, so I just need to make sure that my tires clearance everything and uh, kind of go from that point on and start setting it up. So the first thing we want to do is figure out how and where this thing is going to mount. So go to the center of you get a magnet. The magnet on there in the center of my axle. So roughly where this is going to land is 56 inches. So then over here to the uh, mighty Mabel. Let's see here. We are approximately lands where that bump stop is. This is a rough measurement. So that means our front cost member is going to mount somewhere right here. Of course, that's right where I cut out for my exhaust. But that should make it pretty good there. Maybe I'll have to notch that for the exhaust. I don't know. I'll have to do some mock-up first. I'll get those bump stops out of the way and slide the whole thing under there and start doing some rough uh, setup on that keep hearing gunfire today. I live out in the country, so uh, I think somebody's out there hog hunting or something like that. Uh, a little unnerving, I guess. When I lived in Long Beach, we heard gunfire, but usually it was gang warfare. So out here, it's a little less uh, threatening. But we have uh, these things called javelinas, these big old wild pigs that run around, and uh, they have to be eradicated because they're, they're a real problem. They're incredibly dangerous. So I, hopefully somebody's out shooting those, not each other. the rear end hump out I wouldn't call it a wheel well or something but it's a hump and got the old shock mount as I don't need any of that out so now time to slide everything underneath here and give it a try so I think first I'll snug everything together and that'll be a good excuse to use my new impact so the people at alloy man tools Asked me if I want to try one of their new half-inch cordless impacts. Naturally, I like free stuff. So let's give it a try. Uh, nice and comfortable. This is the 20 volt version. Full charged battery. Ready to try out. What is this here? I'm assuming this must be the charger. All right. Oh, it even comes with sockets. That's not a bad deal. This retails on their website for right around $100. So if it'll actually do something, that is a pretty good deal. So let's give it a try. Let's just give this thing a whirl right out of the box. That, uh, that thing kicks ass. It's not very heavy either. So my ADD has gotten the best of me. Let's put this to the test. 
Let's give this thing a whirl on the world's crustiest motor. change its setting. We are on something called DR. Let's go to high. Well, not working on that. Let's see something a little smaller here. Whew, that thing's hot. Oh. Escape there. Well, blew the threads off that thing. No problem. Huh? This thing does have some ass behind it. I mean, for a motor that's been underwater for 20 years, who knows? For 100 bucks, still ain't bad. Thanks, guys. So, time to center the rear end, and you'll see the bump stop there, that hole there. Now, you'll be tempted to use that. Don't, don't go by that. What you want to do is first kick your dog out of the way. Thanks. You can hold the measuring tape. Is you want to go to your wheel well and measure out the center of your wheel well. And then mark where it is. Run a piece of string from one side to the other side, and that will be your center line of your wheel well. Because the last thing you want to do is go through all this work and find out that your uh, wheel is not centered in the actual wheel well itself. The bump stop is based on the previous suspension, which might not technically be in the right spot. It all depends on how it articulates and so on. So, wheel well is the way to go. Say hi. Because there's nothing more annoying than your wheel not being centered in the wheel arch. So next we want to set the rear end up. So if I'm looking at my wheel, stretch it out there. Looking at my wheel, the wheel is 28 inches, so that means the center is going to be 14. So if I come over here, And set this height here, the theoretical in the center once I put the rear end on there, at 14 inches, and that will be actual ride height. Then I can start tweaking the front. Because it is currently down there, so square it all up. And once it's in, then once everything's in and set, then you can start squaring things up and make sure everything's going to be super right to the chassis, not to the body. So it turns out that sitting it on this wheel rim gives me the exact height I need to where the axle is. So right now I'm going to preliminary using my straight edge over here against the frame. I can now start to one center the rear end to the outside of the frame where I need it. And then as well as find center from that string to that center bolt. So that'll take a little moving around, but that will work. Then up here I can start to find the center. So then I can just mark it where to trim. And then once it's welded or close to welding, then we can really square it up. I really love that saw. I mean, I think this is such a nice clean cut. Man, that was an upgrade for sure. And bam, like a glove. I mean, really, if the sun would just stop going down at inconvenient times, it'd be really helpful because uh, trying to get stuff done during the week is uh, a little difficult. So I got the rear end set back in place. I got it centered on the rack there. I have it centered in the frame. 
Now it's a matter of set the pinion and get it tacked in place. At this stage, we're still in the, uh, the tacking stage just in case we've got to move some other stuff. So using my super old school uh, Sears Craftsman protractor here, setting it to three and a half degrees. At least uh, once I have one of the kids come on here and look at it and verify it because I can't see the numbers. Three and a half degrees is the standard GM um, degree that the transmission points down. So if you have the transmission pointing down and the rear end pointing up, three and a half degrees the same, the match, that will make sure you don't have any vibrations in the drive shaft. Now, I don't have an engine and transmission in there that I'm using other than that dilapidated, you know, barnacle. So a little preliminary here uh, to set it up, but I do have adjustability and I can adjust and fine tune it at that point once I have, uh, you know, engine and trans. So I got everything tacked in place. Now you will notice that the links are going to hit that uh, bulkhead there which uh, means it'll be had to be cut out which is not what I wanted to do but you can see I actually went with this particular suspension design because a four link would have actually ended up in this area here and I would have had to cut it out and I was trying to avoid that but apparently it was destined to be gone so uh, I'll be chopping it out shortly here it's always a work in progress Ba, ba, ba. So the next course of action is to install the frame notch. So I'll go ahead and get this all cleaned up and remove uh, the remnants of the front brace and start going with that. So I'm sitting, in case you can't see that, I'm sitting on those blocks which gives me five inches of ground clearance, which means I want to have five inches of axle clearance so I need to mark that so I know where to put my frame notch and then I can start with that so five inches with the crappiest tape measure I've ever seen somewhere in that ballpark there then I know I'm gonna mount just about like that now you want to have it forward a little bit from the center of the axle because as the axle moves it'll move up in an arch so then it should end in the center here but not too much i can play with it a little bit but that's about where it'll be i'll trim it clean everything up and should be just about ready to go hopefully i can accomplish that before it gets dark <laughs> Time for a new cordless drill, I tell you, or cordless grinder anyway. Can't be held down by the man and his cords any longer. You ever have one of those weird feelings like you're uh, like you're not alone? I don't know. The last uh, about 15 minutes have been real weird here. Kind of like uh, someone's watching me. Kind of make my hair stand up just a little bit. That of course be the hair on my back because uh, you know I'm bald. But I don't know. Weird. Perhaps there are some uh, spirits attached to that hearse after all. So since it's a rainy day schedule. I'm going to go ahead and finish working on my kick up. So I went already and cut off the excess that I don't need on both sides. Now it turns out that this piece I cut off here is the exact height of the, uh, the frame in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and weld that back here and that will be a boxing plate for the back which I need. Took my inside box, marked the center so I can weld the nut in here and uh, so I can mount the bump stop and then I can trim off all the excess beforehand and then I'm going to go ahead and pre-game a little bit and start forming the top section here to fit so it's kind of impossible to measure out so I went inside and got my uh, my fabric 
measuring tape here. You gotta have one of these. So then I can measure how much I need to cut off easily. Transfer that to here. Nibble it off and bada bing, done skis. Easy money. Got that trimmed down. Uh, just to mark it where we're going to start the bend over to the sheet metal brake and bam and you're good you're good just like that These are 100 pound magnets. Get them Amazon, they got a little, little do that in there to hold on there. Super handy for setting stuff up. Bitch. <clears throat> Maybe the 50 pounders would have been better. So this is how it's going to sit. I'll take and uh, up here, I need to trim it a little bit because the frame is a little bit fatter up there just so it sits better because you'll see how it sits there. So I need to clean that up just a smidge. And then I can weld it in, weld the other side in, weld the top on and then cut the center out. See, easy money. I like that. That's going to work out just fine. I don't lose too much floor either. Yeah, there was actually the floor went about right here. Which I could technically could keep it there. But I'd have to make accommodations for the pumpkin. So maybe it'll have a flat floor with a little wumpa wumpa in the center. I don't know. It's all just advanced arts and crafts. Almost there. Got things tacked in place. Need to mount the shocks, but that will be next time. It's getting dark, and it's starting to rain. Johnny Cash is on the radio, and I need a cocktail, so. So I started on the inside, but what I'd found when I went to go line up my piece here is there was a large bulge in the frame right here so it was preventing me from doing that so I figured I would just go ahead and cut that out there now the inside is fully welded the top is fully welded and I have a jack supporting the end there so there's no movement but what I've discovered is uh, this is not only thick but it's three layers uh, it has been a real challenge to uh, get through here I think I've got two hours of us uh, screwing with this with the grinder and a sawzall. And the hand started the other side, so. Make a slow progress. Uh, this really is a uh, hearse only problem. Ah, uh, finally. That was a lot harder than it needed to be. But now. Mark that up, weld it in, and then put the bottom in. Well, I got it in. Yeah, welding upside down inside a fender well, uh, outside with a little bit of breeze. Yeah, not necessarily the best work, so there'll be a little, a little grind reaction there. Now to install the inner hoop. It's actually quite a bit wider, so it makes uh, welding much, much, much easier. And there we are, 100% uh, lifted, or lowered, I guess. So I'm gonna get this thing back down to ride height. Still gotta do much finish welding, but you get the idea. Ended up cutting out the brace there as it was in the way. And this one's coming out next because it's uh, in the way as well. So might as well just do uh, away with all of them and start over. Time for the back. And with it fully compressed, I cut these little square tubes that are the same height plus a quarter inch for the collapsed airbag. I'm gonna use those for mock-up. Got the top bag mount and I just need to trim the crossbar and let's go there. 
and that is just about tacked and ready to go. Uh, I'm not super happy with the shock mounts. Uh, I don't feel like they're going to work for this particular application, which, you know, being a universal kit and obviously a universal car, uh, this is a different story. So, going to modify those, and then I need to tweak the pan hard bar just a bit. And other than that, it's just about ready to finish weld. Well, that's definitely going to be a project for another day. Still need to pull everything back out, do all the finish welding, reassemble the rear end. I got all the parts to rebuild it, all the brakes and so on. Get that all put back in there and repainted, uh, hopefully, for the next uh, couple days. It's supposed to rain for the next uh, a week and a half, so I got a little time to burn. I need to get that thing uh, back to being a roller so I can get it uh, undercover. This uh, working outdoors is not working uh, as well as it could be here. But anyways, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. We'll see you next time. Yeah, for the most part, it's a pretty good, solid, uh, well-engineered kit. It looks uh, pretty stout. Um, Adapting it to a hearse is a little bit different story. It's There's some, definitely some oddball things that you wouldn't get in a normal application, but uh, everything's a learning process. But still need to pull it all back out, get the rear end all rebuilt. I got all the parts for that. Do all the finish welding and paint everything and get it back under the car. And then figure out wheels and tires at this point. And then move on to the front suspension at some point. But I got to get the car under cover. This uh, working outdoors is not... Uh, not working out for me very well. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. See you next time. Please subscribe.